everyone, it's Michelle, and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea History and Fashion Channel. Today we embark on Episode 5 of Karina and the King. Today we talk about His Majesty's Dark Soul, and when do you get to the point where enough is enough? So Karina is at a point in her life where she really doesn't have many friends or allies or people on her side. She doesn't know who she can trust. There's the man, King Juan Carlos, who she considered at one point the husband of her heart, who now she doesn't even know if he's a friend or a foe. One minute he's love bombing her, blowing up her cell phone with text messages, begging her to move in with him in his palace and to help him redo his new London apartment, proposing love and marriage. And the next moment he tells her she's useless and of no use to him and you pretty much better watch your back and sleep with one eye open. So she never knows really what version of Juan Carlos she's going to get. But she has to appease the king on some level. I mean, how do you get rid of a king who's an evil, maniacal stalker who is literally making her life miserable? So she's trying to win him over with appeasement, with humor, trying to keep it nicey-nice. But at the same time, she never knows what version of Juan Carlos she's going to receive. Every day, it's a different man. It's like one day he loves her, the next day he hates her. So she never knows from one day to the next what she's going to wake up to. Well, Karina wakes up one day to a, a phone call from Juan Carlos who lets her know that there is yet another plot to ruin her they're going to set her up once again, but this time it is by a very rogue and corrupt General Sans Roldan, the head of the CNI, the Spanish Secret Service, the same one who let her know that it was her duty to keep the king happy, to keep the king on the throne. Well, he is now abdicated, so she didn't follow the plan. And now King Juan Carlos is telling her that this man is hell-bent, frame her once again in an embezzlement crime, and that the head of the Secret Service, General Sanz Rodon, is spearheading the campaign against Karina. But King Juan Carlos is acting like he's there for her. He's letting her know this plan that is going on, the corruption within the Spanish Secret Service. Again, remember, he is now the king who has abdicated. So he's obviously looking out for Karina, or so she thinks. So he tells her she has to meet with a man who's basically kind of conducting this internal affairs with the Spanish Secret Service, trying to uncover this plot and to oust General Sanz Roldan. So Juan Carlos tells Karina she is to meet with Jose Manuel Velarjo, who is spearheading this internal investigation of the CNI, the Spanish secret police. He was a former police commissioner, and he's there to pretty much interview her to make sure she has nothing to do with any of these embezzlement charges. So he starts to show her some official documents that are coming from the government. And there's a plan in place that will frame Karina for embezzling money for an investment project that she was helping King Juan Carlos back in 2006. So according to the government documents that he starts to show Karina, the plan is to frame Karina for embezzling money from an investment project she had quietly helped King Juan Carlos with back in 2006. Remember the Saudi trip? The Saudi Spanish Infrastructure Fund, back when Karina was the girlfriend slash advisor, escorting him on official trips. The first step of the plan was to fake a Madrid residency for Karina because at the time she did not have a residency in Madrid. She was a resident of Monaco. But in order for the Spanish prosecutors to charge her, she has to have an address in Madrid. So she thinks that they made a fake one in her name 
so they can come up with these charges. And a lot of people are wondering where she got the 65 million euro or where Juan Carlos got the 65 million euro to give to Karina. Some people suspect it might have been a kickback from these Saudis in regards to this 2006 deal that never happened. So as Karina pours over the details and turns the page, her eyes fall on something very familiar. She sees the initials PC for Princess Karina. And then she also sees a lot of her personal information from her banking institutions are now filtered throughout the document and she realizes this is from stolen documents from her Monaco office. So if you remember when the security and the Secret Service took over her apartments and her offices in Monaco for, quote, her security, there were documents missing. They stole personal banking documents to use against her, but the king told her it was for her protection. Now she realizes they're literally faking documents using her banking information to look like she's moving money. As she goes down the documents, her heart stops and her stomach drops. She looks down on the paper and she sees the initials for Juan Carlos, that Juan Carlos actually signed off on this plan. So again, we have King Juan Carlos who sends her to talk to this internal cop, the good cop, who's investigating the bad guy from the Spanish Secret Service, General Sanz Rodon, who was the right-hand man for many years to King Juan Carlos himself. And in the documents, she sees that he was involved in the plan to incriminate Karina. Very weird that he would recommend her work with internal affairs and it's going to bust his participation wide open. So then she realizes the Secret Service alleged effort and plan to frame her is already in motion. They're taking her financial documents, her personal papers, acting like she has a Madrid address. So she believes that General Sanz Roldan is the man who's 100% overseeing the project. But then she sees the king's signature and he signs off on the plan. Again, why is he referring her to work with internal police where it's just going to incriminate him to frame Karina? So Karina is kind of confused as to why the king is involved. He's signing off and he was apparently given several options to choose from on the corruption plan and ruin of Karina's life. Like he's ordering at a restaurant, oh, I'll take option two. Now she's freaking out because they're literally trying to make her look like a career criminal. And she starts to read the directions that King Juan Carlos literally put by himself into motion. So now she doesn't know what to do. She's speechless. But Valerjo, you know, he can't take her word for it. He's just sitting there. They meet several times. He takes her testimony, interviews her. He leaves. And so she's doing all that she can. You know, she doesn't know what to do here. And she's thinking she can trust this man. Again, the man that King Juan Carlos referred her to. Why would she trust this man? <laughs> But again, Karina's at a loss. She doesn't have any friends or allies, so she's trying to think for the best. You know, stay positive. Hopefully this man really is going to expose them, but also the king is involved. So it's kind of confusing. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy in this situation? But regardless, Karina's in trouble, and she doesn't know who to turn to at this point. So she thinks they're having a very off-the-record discussion, and she kind of lets it all hang out. She's dropping some tea. She's telling all secrets of how the king has his money, secret bank accounts, how he uses these people and those people to move things around. Because the number one thing that King Juan Carlos wanted to do was to hide his wealth from the Spanish people and the Spanish government. Lots of smoke and mirrors, so he had to hide his wealth and move it around. But Karina has no idea she's being secretly recorded. So now during this time when she finds out that the king is part of this plot 
again. She has to appease the man because he's calling her acting like they're friends. And you have to remember he's in this huge renovation project where he's refurbishing the London apartment that was paid for, of course, by a, the Amani royal family that he's trying to completely gut and create into a copycat apartment that looks exactly like Karina's. And he wants her to head up the design. Now, this is a huge project costing around four million pounds. So even though with everything going on, the media smear campaign, the blacklisting, the threats, Karina has to continue to manage it with less sleep. She's working more, looking over her shoulder, trying to appease the king, be on his good side, even though she knows she cannot trust this man. She has to. She's in survival mode. She's sufficiently scared that if she's not somehow cooperative, that she's going to face more repercussions from the king. So she's kind of playing his dirty little game playing stupid. Oh yes, whatever you say, dear. Okay, dear. But still looking over her shoulder. Now during this renovation, every expense is accounted for. Everything's above board within the law. She's definitely making sure everything looks like her place. Every towel, every napkin, every cushion, every coffee table, book, etc. Because again, the king was obsessed with her decor. He was obsessed with her apartment and she's pretty much creating a bachelor pad copycat version of her own home but she's doing everything legally she's overseeing this four million dollar restoration a remodel of this very expensive apartment and then one day she receives a very weird email from the developer telling her there's going to be a change of title a transfer of title now the title for the 50 million dollar apartment is being transferred to a man named Mohammed El Husseini so he is a British citizen of Lebanese origin, and she had met him once on a trip to Abu Dhabi. So now she realizes that uh, there's something hooky going on here. So she sees that the property is now being put in his name and the alarm bells start to go off. Juan Carlos is using her once again. She does up the apartment all nice. He uses someone else's name to hide the asset because, again, he can't have a $50 million apartment in his name. So another proxy, another shady deal. And, of course, Karina is smack dab in the middle of this deal as the decorator once again. He's always trying to involve her in his shady, illegal dealings and then tries to frame her. At the same time, it's bizarre. So Karina starts to flip out. She's trying to distance herself immediately from this project. She starts firing out emails to individuals, to parties, the developer, the Omanis, saying this is the person fronting for Juan Carlos. This will become a huge problem. I'm stopping short of saying this will be a criminal offense, but I'm making it very clear that she's not going to be a part of it. So what she does is she starts blocking email addresses, redirecting the mail. She's trying to get herself out of this situation before it falls on top of her. So around this time, you know, Karina feels very alone. Her reputation is tanked. Um, her friends and associates, people aren't talking to her anymore. People think she's a thief. She's involved in all these corruption cases, you know, stole money from Spain, etc., now her son's behavior, Alexander, who's a teenager, really starts to act up to his mother. And remember, he's a prince. Prince Alexander refers to her as, well, you're just a commoner, mom. <laughs> well, do his homework, well, you're just a commoner. Now remember, he was very close to King Juan Carlos. He considered King Juan Carlos like a father figure to him. And now he's starting to read the press and believes his mother stole from the king and from Spain. He's believing the press and giving her an attitude because that's what teenagers do. So now King Juan Carlos does something that she never thought he would do. He's not only going after her friends, her colleagues, her business, her public reputation. He's now going for her children. That's right, her children. So she finds out that there's a WhatsApp group where all of them are in on it. And they call themselves the pride, you know, like a pack of lions. Now on the WhatsApp group, 
is Juan Carlos himself, her ex-husband, Philip, you know, Philip Atkins, Casimir, her second husband, and both of her children. You know, when she had that lovely Christmas or the birthday party where they were all there together as one big happy family, he now has infiltrated her own children and they talk about her in a WhatsApp group. Can you believe this man? So in the group chat, allegations against Karina are thrown out like it's nothing. Every single one of her exes claim all of her achievements, everything she ever has in her life is because she stole it. Talk about bitter. Even her married name and the title, Zuzon Wittenstein Zahn, which happens to be from her ex-husband, Prince Casimir, which is of German royal lineage, that she keeps the title after her marriage ended. Now that's perfectly legal to do. You look at Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, still uses her royal title. Now if she was to remarry, she would lose the title, just like Karina. If Karina remarried, she could no longer use the title. See, I have to remember at the time, her son, Prince Alexander, who was 14, is in a WhatsApp with his sister, Natasia, his father, Prince Casimir, Philip Atkin, his mother's first husband, but who he's close to, and of course, King Juan Carlos himself, who was like a surrogate father to him, all manipulating him, saying vicious things about Karina. That's horrible. Now, her daughter, Natasia, their relationship is strained, to say the least. Her father is Philip Atkins. Now, Natasia lives in New York, uh, which is a long flight away from Karina. And by the end of 2015, it had been months since Karina had spoken to her daughter. Karina finds out in the summer of 2016 that there's a vicious and horrific rumor about her daughter, Natasia, who's 23, and King Juan Carlos that starts circulating. Her daughter apparently is vacationing on an island off of Cape Cod with a billionaire by the name of Pepe Von Jule, who's in his early 70s, and her friend Juan Carlos. So this 23-year-old daughter spotted frolicking on a boat with these two men. So the rumors start circulating in high society that there's some inappropriateness between Karina's 23-year-old daughter, Natasia, and her ex, King Juan Carlos. Now you can just imagine the pain and agony that she has to be going through. She said she cried for weeks and couldn't bring herself to fathom. Would he stoop this low and go after her daughter? So she has one child who's giving her an attitude and her daughter, who is not on speaking terms with her at the moment, is seen frolicking around with her ex and a 70-year-old billionaire on a yacht. Literally every mother's nightmare. But it gets worse. Because King Juan Carlos is king of the douches. This man is next level crazy. So as if that couldn't get any worse. Karina finds out that King Juan Carlos himself boards a flight to a remote village in Austria. Yeah, he's going there to see the great-grandmother of her son, Prince Alexander, and he hadn't probably been there in 30 years. Why is he going there? Marine Princess Susan Wittenstein Zahn, she's nearly 100 years old, and Juan Carlos who has a singular objective. He's literally trying to destroy her reputation now with her family. Apparently the press and friends weren't enough. Her children weren't enough. Now he's going to go to her relatives in Austria to spread his viciousness and his smear campaign against Karina. So he starts spinning nasty lies to her family, to her children's family, grandparents, to undermine their trust in Karina. Karina's family, ex-partners and all, had gone from gathering around the Christmas tree every year to barely speaking. 
Her daughter is estranged. Her former husbands are trolling her on WhatsApp. And her former in-laws now believe she's a criminal. Will this man ever stop? And at the center of it all, the once charming, adored husband of her heart, King Juan Carlos, the man who proposed to her twice, is trying to have Karina. And if he can't have Karina, and if he can't have his money back, he's going to destroy her however he can. Talk about women scorn while men scorn apparently, in my opinion, are deadly. And he's going to take from her and ruin her however he can. Three years after first meeting with Jose Manuel Villaro, Karina's world collapses. The biggest crisis yet finally hits her. It starts in November of 2017 with the arrest of Valerjo on corruption and money laundering charges. She's like, what is happening? He was the good cop, the one who was doing the internal investigation against the bad person of the Spanish Secret Service, General Zon Rodon, but now he's being arrested? Unbeknownst to Karina, Valarjo had been working with the general all along. Again, why does she trust this man? Digging up dirt on Karina and what she knows about the king's corrupt financial practices. So she literally sang like a canary, thinking it's off the record, but it wasn't. They wanted to gain her confidence. Again, you know, a wolf in sheep clothing, the oldest trick in the book, so that they could recover some compromising documents that she had. My opinion is they were trying to get to that 65 million euro they're trying to figure out what bank she was hiding it in, in my opinion. So when Jose Valerjo fails to get the supposed hidden files or documents that they were trying to get from Karina that she says she didn't have, General San Radon turns on Valerjo, suspects he's a double agent actually helping Karina and not just pretending to help her. So General Zan Radon, for the first time, said that, uh, you know, Mr. Valerjo, you're not meeting our objectives here. And so they basically throw him under the bus. So in order to save himself, Valerjo throws San Rodon's mission to the wind and goes on national television to expose him. In an interview, he pretty much releases the hidden recordings of Karina's interviews with him three years previously where she spills the tea, y'all. She tells all the details of the king's dirty dealings. He tells the people of the threats that she received about the Princess Diana book that was on her coffee table, warning her about all the tunnels that could be between Nice and Monaco. He lets it all out the bag, guys. Every dirty detail. So to say this is a bombshell, it's an understatement because she has now outed the king who was already abdicated four years earlier, but now everyone knows the depth of his crime. Karina reveals the king's secret assets hidden in Switzerland under the identity of his cousin and his Swiss lawyer Dante Kanaka. She's held this card for so long but she's backed in a corner and she finally plays it. The king has been hiding his money for years and the public response is explosive. People still looked at Karina like she was the traitor. She's the one who exposed the king, you know, that she's trying to discredit the Spanish monarchy, yada, yada, yada. But she's not the guilty party. So Karina knows that all eyes are going to be on her once again. They're starting to investigate the king, wheeling up boxes of financial documents from his financial advisors, from his attorney. So she knows it's coming. It's coming. It's always coming for her. So she lawyers up and she makes sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed. Because let's not forget, she's still got 65 million of the king's euros sitting in her bank account. Even though she did everything correctly, she lawyered up. She said, you basically wake up every morning 
and knowing that your lawyers have to question you to make sure you are doing everything correctly. They have to check your bank accounts. They do extensive due diligence of every single bank account that you own. Aggravated money laundering, that's the charge that had been brought against Karina, is a crime punishable in Switzerland for up to five years in prison. Now, Karina writes a letter in February 2019 to the now king, the son of King Juan Carlos, King Felipe. She wants to write him a letter to let him know that she was falsely accused of these crimes and that for the sake of our families, we should sit down and have a frank conversation to make sure he's aware what his father has been up to. So her letter does not receive a response back because Felipe was desperately trying to save the monarchy and was distancing himself from his father as much as he could. So, of course, he's not reaching out to his father's ex-mistress, the woman who's been in the press for years as a criminal, as a villain. He just, you know, he's just not going to write back to her. So one day, Karina receives a phone call out of the blue from King Juan Carlos, and she's a little bit taken aback, as they had not spoken to each other in months, especially after that huge fiasco of the leaked Vallejo tapes had aired all over national television exposing King Juan Carlos of his crimes. He tells her, I think we should meet and we need to talk. So, of course, she's immediately nervous. Oh, man, every time she's around this man, something happens. But she decides to meet at her apartment for lunch like they had done on numerous occasions. But she's nervous and she's prepared this time. She's not going down like she normally does, especially with this man who is a viper. You cannot trust him. She's anxious. She hadn't seen him in months. But now her son, Alexander, who is now 17 and who is now on his mother's side, realizing these people were liars, they were corrupt, he also wants to be there for this lunch with Juan Carlos. He has some questions for the former king. Now here's the really good part. So Karina, in preparation of this meeting at her home with King Juan Carlos, the Viper, she contacts an Israeli security company to keep her safe because she's not bringing a knife to a gunfight, y'all. This is not her first rodeo with this man. So these people came in from Tel Aviv and they swept her home for bugs, cameras, security, you know, detailing, etc. She was going to have security in her home. That's right. She wasn't playing. So when the king does arrive at her home, he's there with a very large man who she doesn't recognize. And she's wondering, you know, who is this man? Because it's very unusual for him to show up with new people around him. So Karina wants to know, is he security? Is he his private secretary. Who is this man? So it's very awkward when she opens the door and you have the Spanish security man staring at the Israeli security people. It's kind of like a standoff at the front door. So they quickly send the security into the kitchen so they can privately sit down Juan Carlos, Karina, and her son Alexander for this very awkward lunch. Now, Karina's playing the part of the perfect hostess. She makes sure she has all of the king's favorite items, his favorite wine. There's caviar on ice. There's a delicious pasta. She's laying it all out for his majesty. So Karina, the very first question that she asks Juan Carlos is, what is your intention? Are you here to have a resolution with me? Or are you here because of General Zahn Rodon for this trip? And he basically answers that, uh, you know, General Zahn Rodon was his best friend, his closest confidant. The man who he told her was plotting against her is now his BFF. Again, a viper. So she notices nothing has changed with this man. He's cold. Uh, he had been coached by his spy master. This whole meeting was doomed from the start. Juan Carlos was playing games. It becomes very clear to her he was not there to have a heart-to-heart -heart or a constructive dialogue. Instead, he's acting a little strange. He's acting a little nervous, a little funny. 
he's talking very loudly and kind of leaning over to Karina as he speaks. He keeps asking her weird questions, and she realizes he's wearing a wire. She thinks he's bugged, that he's trying to set her up or trap her into some weird conversation. So it was clear that he wasn't very good at this. He's not a natural, and so she knows immediately he's up to his old tricks. So Karina's son, Alexander, you know, he's had enough of this charade, right? He, he's done with this man. So he speaks up and he's like, you know, why did you do this to my mom? You know, you accused her of stealing things. Do you know how painful it is for me, how my life has been hard? You know, can you offer us an explanation of why you did this? And he just shrugged his shoulders like, you know, whatever. He doesn't care. No emotion. He's just cold. And that solidified it for her son that this man was dead to him now. He wasn't the father figure that he used to be. He was a man who clearly did not care about either one of them. The king, in fact, is not moved at all. All he cares about is protecting himself, which has been his plan the entire time. And Karina and her son are just collateral damage. He doesn't care. But apparently, he gets even lower than that. He starts to talk about her daughter to Karina and Alexandra in a very inappropriate and disgusting way. Kind of starts talking about the rumors of the alleged relationship that he may or may not have had with her daughter. So at this point, she's pissed. And then he mentions to her that he knows about the letter that she wrote to his son, King Felipe, and he accuses her of attempting to blackmail him. Now again, that letter was meant because she wants to clear the air with his son to let him know what your father's been doing, you know, protect yourself, protect the families. But he's accusing her of trying to blackmail his son, give him information about his father. So that is why Juan Carlos is extremely upset and he's definitely there to take her out. And at this point, it's just turning cruel. So she knows she has reached the point of no return. There's no way this man and her will ever have a peaceful resolution. It's dead. There's no love here. It's gone. He was truly a dark soul, lost of love, and he was full of greed and hatred toward Karina. But Karina had reached her breaking point. It was one thing for this man to treat her poorly, to try to annihilate her, to ruin her reputation, her business, to ruin her friendships, to make her life hell for the past five years. But it's quite another thing when you drag her children into the mix. Mama Bear has popped out, hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned. And she has now decided that King Juan Carlos has to pay. She was no longer rolling over and waiting for this man to take another hit. She was not going to lie down and die for this man. She was going to make King Juan Carlos loathe the day he ever cursed her and her family. King Juan Carlos was going to pay. Well, guys, that's all I have for Episode 5. Season finale, Episode 6, will be released this week. So stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. But you guys, the final episode, we finally see some redemption for Karina. Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate you for being here, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.